It's time for the Giz Wiz with Maz Mattis writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1811, recorded December 22nd, 2020. What a cheesy show. On this episode of the Giz Wiz, we have our first look at CES 2021. I have a big gadget that I think you're gonna wanna see the difference between this gadget and my old gadget, and we have your viewer videos all next on The Giz Wiz! It's the same old show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for The Giz Wiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for The Giz Wiz now. Now! now. And Santa's helper of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good myself. Doing very good. Charlie's been doing good. You asked about it right in the in the uh, pre-show. Nothing to oh, report yes, there, yeah. which is good. Um, Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Boy, I, I don't have anything thrilling this week. We had... <laughs> Did we have, well, let's see, the snowstorm was last week, right? Uh, I am, yeah. You know what? When you don't go to meetings and you don't go to the gym and you, it is, days just. They just slip by. It feels like slip. it's only been half a week compared to our normal. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, we are recording this on oh, a yeah, Tuesday yeah, yeah, instead yeah, exactly. of. On a, exactly. I guess everything exciting happens on a Wednesday for us to. Oh, chat that's about right. it. So that we can talk about it on the, on a Thursday. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, I guess uh, we should we have, say to all of our viewers, happy holidays. This is our holiday episode. Uh, if you're watching live, it's before Christmas. If you're watching after the fact, it'll be after. So happy holidays, all. Exactly. And, I, and don't forget, join us. We are taping our show New Year's Eve and then coming back. At a quarter to 12, my time, New York time, to welcome in the new year. And then we'll be back an hour later, a quarter to, a quarter to 12 central time, to welcome in the new year uh, for Chad. And so if you want to make a little 30-second video, you could send in um, just a, a New Year's greeting, or you could send in what your New Year's resolution is. Okay, or you can send in a New Year's resolution you make every year and you will never, <laughs> ever break. Okay, I make the same one every year. I will not eat razor blades. That has been my New Year's resolution since high school. That's a good never, one. Never, ever broke it. That's smart. That's very smart. Yeah. It, okay, so if you want to send us your New Year's Eve, res your New Year's resolution, one that you want to keep. Or if, you can, if there's one you know you can't keep, um, just send in one you know you can keep, okay? I, I uh, and, think I personally like the New Year's Eve resolution best because then it's much, much quicker it's very time short. frame. Yeah, very short. Yeah, it's very right. short. Yeah, right. especially if you make it uh, on the show at a quarter to 12. <laughs> exactly. Okay? Mail at gizwiz.tv, okay? Send us uh, really short things, you know, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Put it on YouTube. Send us the link. Point oh, okay. Oh, Chumley says we, we have very similar New Year's resolutions. His is he will not eat bags of glass. Don't tell that to Brian Brushwood. Uh, no, no, exactly. <laughs> Don't tell either one the Brian Brushwood. Exactly. If he has those two New Year's resolutions, his act would be over. <laughs> exactly. He would. He would fail. He would fail. Yeah. <laughs> um. Good. Awesome. I can't think. Uh, of anything should else. we jump yeah. in? Yeah, jump into some gadgets. Yeah. Why not? Okay. So, uh, 2021 CES. Obviously, there is none. Um, I went to my first CES 2021, uh, meeting with Lenovo. I don't know who set the time up. It was 9 AM here, which is okay. I rolled out of bed and, and watched it, but that meant people in California Oof. had to be there at 6 AM. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, a couple of great things, uh, all embargo till January 11th. Okay. CES is a week later. In January, because what does it matter since it's all uh, <laughs> virtual? Um, but a PR company told me 
about a CES 2021 Innovation Awards honoree, a new virtual keyboard. And I suddenly thought, it's been years. It used to be every CES, someone had a new version of a keyboard, either a physical keyboard or a virtual keyboard. And now I can't remember when. It's been uh, six or seven years since I've seen any kind of a keyboard. Have you seen anything? I have you remember? not. I think yeah. the, the, the most recent thing is that Apple, like three or four updates ago, allowed you to be able to use swipe on their keyboard where you can, you don't have to lift your finger and you can just kind of Oh, oh, right. oh okay. Which oh, Google oh. had had forever and you yes. can also get third party keyboards yeah. easier on Google. All right, so... The, uh, here's a little uh, under minute demo. And, and by the way, anybody can download this. And, and I'll tell you, I did it and I, I I worked with it for maybe an hour and I'll tell you my results. So this is what, what the new keyboard is. It's called TypeWise. Okay. Yeah, it's made for two thumbs. Space keys are centered for accessibility. Frequent special characters are written with a tap or swipe. Emoji can be written in an instant. To delete, swipe left. To delete more, swipe and hold. To restore, swipe back. Ooh. Typewise automatically recognizes the language you're writing in. We currently support over 40 languages. The magic Typewise button offers cool features, such as changing a language manually, or switching to the traditional keyboard layout for those that don't want to learn the new Honeycomb way. Me. <laughs> to learn the Honeycomb keyboard, simply play the built-in game for about 15 minutes and you'll feel the difference and never want to go back. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So can you go back to the video and just freeze that keyboard? Yeah. Well, first of all, freeze that keyboard and, and right off the top, you sound very dubious. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, it took me a really, really long time to get the muscle memory of the current keyboard and yes. i don't know if that's like a dyslexic thing or a human thing but a lot of time like this this seems painful this seems absolutely painful this honeycomb layout the thing is is that that delete feature and the undelete feature both of those looked amazing I would I, I would get this and then use the normal keyboard almost just for that. Um, the the one issue is um, on this is like a very small issue is on iPhone you can click and hold the space bar and then you get a cursor and it's almost like a little trackpad. So I use that all the time um, and so I could see that this would kind of mess with my muscle memory of that. Oh, um. Yes, I, I, the first two minutes, I loved it. Okay. I love the fact that the two tan keys are space bars, right? So you don't have to go down to the bottom, but then I, I took the, I did, did the 15 minute learning thing next to over on the right, that one key with the question mark, yeah. that is four keys. What? Huh? Yes, okay. it is the push up its exclamation, push down its question, push a little the other way its quotes, push a little oh. or hold and its single quote. I, yeah. I got so lost. Oh, the other thing that worked pretty well, you notice it's all lowercase. Hit the key directly down, you type a lowercase r. Hit the key slightly up. It's a capital R. Ooh. Yeah. No. I th the thing uh, is, I think that there is someone who is going to think, oh, gr thank you. You know, if you're just, yes. I don't know. But if you're just getting into typing on your phone, right, it makes sense. It's kind of like the Dvorak key set versus the QWERTY key set. People who are, are fast typers want the Dvorak key set more power to you. But I like being able to walk up to any computer anywhere and already know where to type. And I don't think my brain could switch between the two 
And same sort of thing, let's assume that I get super fast, I get five times faster at typing on this keyboard. The moment I pick up a friend's phone, go to a restaurant and have to check out with their iPad, like, I feel like I'm just gonna be back to square one. Um, yeah, I, 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 I am not going to use it. Yeah. Um, and if you just go to typewise.app, you can download it. Okay. Um, it's free. I did do the 15 minute training thing and then the thing came up. Oh, you did it. Uh, you now can get a, a, a free two week trial of typewise pro. And I scrolled all the way to the bottom to no thanks because you know those things. You never know when two weeks is up and you end up starting to get billed for it. Right. Um, anyway, like Chad <laughs> I like said, how you said also, no if, subscription. <laughs> no, no. Wait a second. Oh, the, the, one th the one thing that is probably good is, let me just see what, how they put it here, is that all the, all data stays on the device is not accept, uh, accessible by typewise or any third party also i thought it was kind of clever that you start typing and it knows what language you're typing in yeah and, and it sets itself to that so it looks um, like they do have a cursor mode by the way which is the thing i was talking about so that's nice oh okay oh okay okay um, it, um, it looks amazing it looks great can't knock them on that i also no. feel like the hexagon layout is probably a little bit better for your thumbs I mean, you can just kind of see this G key versus this. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just Photoshop. No, but no. It seems they, they said it's like forty percent larger, right? Uh, for the or seventy percent larger key to hit. But I mean, it was certainly interesting enough for it to win an innovation award uh, uh, honoree. They haven't given out the awards uh, yet, but again, if you want to just try it, just go to Typewise app and download the iOS or the Android version, and you can just play with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, think I think it's cool. I, I really do. Yeah. I just don't think it's for me at all. No, it was definitely not for me. And I put in my 15 minutes. Right. And then some. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, but a first look at uh, CES 2021, something that would, would have been there. Um, okay, with that, Every week in December, we have a Chad Extra, and extra, I think you said extra. in the intro we're going to want this. Is that right? Well, so I it was a big it was a big gadget for me. In fact, okay. you might it may fall out of the gadget category because it was a whole computer. <laughs> Another Tesla, Tesla, <laughs> Tesla. Exactly. I got the Cybertruck. No. Uh, so here is. Oh, okay. The Apple MacBook Air M1. Oh, my. oh wow. Hey, Dickie D and me from just a moment ago. Uh, so today I am going to be reviewing the M1 Apple MacBook Air. Uh, now, the M1 chip, just to keep everybody up to date, is a brand new piece of silicon that Apple develops. You know, Intel and i5, i7. Well, that is what the M1 chip is replacing, is an Intel chip inside of their Apple products. Now, they also released not only just a MacBook Air, which I have, but a MacBook Pro and a Mac Mini that all have this same chip integrated in. This is a really, really big deal. Having a processor swapped out is not a small thing. I remember when PowerPC was switched out for Intel a whole bunch of years ago, and that was a transition, so we're doing it again with this chip. And what that means is that Apple really controls absolutely everything. So, in seeing what this computer can do, it is a really good indication of where we're gonna be heading also in the future with other Apple products. Now that you're up to date, so let's talk about this specific laptop. I decided to go for the MacBook Air because it is the same chip that's in the MacBook Pro, 
really the only thing that you are giving up is the thermal management. So the Pro has a fan which will kick on if it's getting too hot. So this ha only has the uh, it only has the option to basically throttle the the processor in order to cool down. So this may slow down if I use it for a very long time, but I didn't feel like the extra cost was worth it. And uh, I didn't think that I would really be putting it through its paces that badly. So the hardware is really nice. Obviously it's Apple quality. On one side, you have two USB-C ports. Either of those ports can charge the computer. And then on the other side, you only have a headphone jack and that's it. It has a massive touchpad, especially compared to wow. other PCs in the same space, and a really nice keyboard. Also, over here on the corner is a little Touch ID button. So this is your sleep and wake button, as well as a fingerprint sensor to actually unlock your uh, device if you want to quickly get into it. By the way, another thing I'm remembering is I did not like that touch bar that's on the MacBook Pros, so that's another reason I went for the Air. I've owned this computer for a while, basically a few days after the launch of, of this, and it's been fantastic. It has been so good. It's been a great computer. Battery life, incredible. Screen brightness is good. Uh, the keyboard, fantastic. The touch bar, the, the, the touchpad, amazing. I cannot tell you how many PC laptops I basically throw away because I cannot stand their touchpads. Apple really does the touchpad perfectly. The other thing that that M1 chip provides you is that you can now get uh, uh, apps that were made for iPhone and iPad. So there's a few things that don't have desktop apps, but I have them inside of this laptop. Uh, mainly, I use a calorie counter app. So uh, that's uh, Lose It. Wait, is it Lose It? What is it called? Lose It. So here it is. This is the iPad version of this app running on the computer, which is fantastic. Also, Authy, which is a two-factor authentication app that doesn't have an app made specifically for the Mac, I can use the iPad version. These apps are a little bit clunky. They're not perfect. They're obviously not developed specifically for a laptop and they can be a, a bit buggy. Like I was having issues with widgets refreshing with the Lose It app specifically. Um, but it's nice that they're there. They're kind of a fun backup for if you, if you need that one thing that hasn't been developed and you don't want to constantly be jumping over to a browser and, uh, and, and loading up a web page to get that exact same thing. Now, I thought that I would do a real world demonstration on the M1 chip. Uh, lots of reviewers have talked about how fast it is, but I wanted to show you from my perspective. Now, this is not a perfect uh, comparison, but this is my old laptop. And this was the first generation of the MacBook uh, when they reintroduced it. Very, very small and light. This is not a MacBook Air which is this, this is just a MacBook. Uh, but you can see that they're, they're similar in size and thickness. Um, this is a little bit smaller on the screen size, so it does have a smaller footprint. You can sort of see that right there. So it is a little bit smaller. So here they are next to each other. And I don't know if you can read this, but that mentions that this was early 2015, that this MacBook was created and then obviously uh, this was the 2020 M1. So just as a comparison, this is not a fair comparison, okay? But I'm just going to show you the differences that this new computer makes in my life. So opening up Safari, right? Something I do every day. So we're going to try to open them at the exact same time. Click. There we go. And this is just the startup page. And you can see the difference. There is no content on this page. That was just the startup page. Now let's go to YouTube. Uh, this one will be signed in, this one won't be, but it should bring up the YouTube start page. Three, two, one, click. There we go. The other one, as you can see. Yeah. And there we go, now it is, it's finished. So just these real world situations for me is like incredible. Quitting, you can see that there was a little bit of a lag. Let's do the same thing with, with Google Chrome, so we'll, Click, same time, Chrome loaded 
on this side, over here, you can see that little <laughs> app. Yeah. Oh, where's Chrome? Oh, shit, game. where did you put Chrome? Murray. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a big there difference on that. <laughs> there, it's loaded in. So th this speed upgrade is, is like absolutely incredible for me. One more example, this is the music app, what used to be iTunes. So we'll click those at the same time. Now this is, a, it's a, there you go, let's we'll let some of those icons loaded in, perfect. And then the old MacBook, there we go. So now that is loaded. So obviously, especially if I'm multitasking, these types of speed increases are going to be compounded, uh, which is, uh, uh, using this new laptop is just absolutely incredible. Okay, so that's the, the video. Uh, uh, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> so I'm. What was the difference in price between that when you bought it and now? Ooh, that's a good question. I think they were very, very, very close. Now, well, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I could think that could be possible. Right. I, because I, things got better, but prices went down. Right. right. And the MacBook at that time, and, and remember, it is it, that I mentioned it and I want to mention it again. It's not really fair. That other computer is five years old, but I wanted to tell you the story from my perspective. That was my, that was my computer. I was using that every day. Um, and now I've, you know, upgraded to this. Um, so yeah, I think it was very, com, com, it, so Slump is saying same price. Um, is the base and model. what is that same price? A thousand dollars. So oh my goodness! Wow! Right, right. thousand bucks. Now here's here's the page to to get it. And I did one upgrade on mine, which is boop. I got five twelve instead of uh, two fifty six. So that was the okay. upgrade I did. So that's a thousand two hundred dollars for that. Okay. So if you're if you're in the market for a laptop. Highly, highly, highly suggest this laptop. One of the reasons I always suggest Mac for laptops specifically, I, I almost, I kind of shy away from any other type of laptop, uh, unless if it's like maybe a gaming laptop that's gonna have like a ton of power in, in it, is they just have really, really long lives. And the, um, a Mac will last you for a long time where a PC, I feel like I need to buy a new PC laptop every two years. Like that other laptop that I showed off, even though it was very slow, still five years old. It limped for five, you know, it, 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 got, it got me there. Um, so yeah, so highly, highly, highly suggest it. Um, and uh, it, the other crazy thing that I didn't really mention is there is translation going on behind the scenes if an app is not made specifically for this processor. You know, they have to be recoded, recompiled, and everything. So, uh, but my own personal opinion is that this Mac is doing way better, obviously, than my old one. I can actually run Photoshop and and actually edit photos and, and edit videos and use the whole um, Adobe Creative Cloud suite where I could not do that on the other MacBook. It was literally impossible to try to scale an image or something like that. Uh, and I, it was so quick and easy on the MacBook Air that it, I almost didn't realize I'm using Photoshop. Like it was, it was, it was like I was working on my desktop. Um, so super, super, super happy with all that. Uh, and it includes Touch ID, which is really nice, um, and uh, and whatnot. And then of course they have the, the Pro version, which has a instead of the function keys F1 through 12 at the top, it has a touch bar, which is a, another tiny little screen. I personally don't like that at all, uh, but if you want the Pro version, you can get that plus the fans. And then they also have a Mac Mini version, which uh, doesn't include the monitor or anything like that, and is a little cheaper, which is kind of nice. Wow. So there we go. Sound, sounds good. Thanks. It sounds good. Uh, well, we both bought something almost the same day. <laughs> We're talking about coffee makers, and we saw your coffee maker last week. And mine had just arrived, and I hadn't unboxed it when uh, you showed your video. So here's my video with my new coffee maker. Perfect.
I don't have a lot of space in the kitchen. I had a regular coffee maker here, and this cake cup machine was here. And I thought, I wonder if anybody makes a two-in-one machine. And I went on Amazon and found the Hamilton Beach Flex Brew. All right. So on this side, it makes coffee in a carafe. And on this side, it makes coffee with a K-cup. And there's uh, an interesting thing about this. If you want to make more coffee than the K-cup and use your own coffee... The little drain here opens up, and there's oh. another container in here. Take the cake cup out. This opens up, and you can put your own grinds in here, okay? And then you can make, I guess, the equivalent of, like, two cake cups. And I like the fact that pretty much everything over here comes out, so it's really easy to uh, keep this clean. And then this goes down here, stores in the bottom, and then this little guy goes on top. And then if you're brewing into a thermal cup, into a, uh, a big, tall thermal container, this lifts out so you can fill that. Uh, has a timer. So this side is single when you're using it for a K-cup. And then you hit this, and it will go to the carafe side. And it has two settings for uh, a strength. Let me see what they are. Um, basically, it's just regular and bold. I just leave it on bold. And then you can pre-program it to go off when you want. And I thought it was a great deal. It was $99 on Amazon. And a couple of strange... <laughs> a very strange thing in the instruction book. After every, it says, you know, how to make a K-cup. And then it says, unplug machine. And then it tells you how to brew a carafe of coffee, which I did here. Made great coffee, by the way. And then it says, unplug machine. <laughs> and on Amazon, someone wrote and said, why do you have to unplug the machine after every use? And I think it was some from the manufacturer replied, it's the safe thing to do but it may uh, stop the clock. Well, it will stop the clock. So it makes no sense. Uh, in, in other words, every time you did something, you would have to unplug it. And when you plugged it in, you'd have to reset the clock. And, and, and it also said, uh, the clock in the machine is not meant to be your timepiece. Uh, uh, the only thing I don't like about it, all right, so someone we know near and dear doesn't like their K-cup machine because it stores water and they <laughs> wanted it so that when you made a K-cup, you, you put about? the water in just the amount you need. This machine is that way for the K-cup side, but it's very well done. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but over here, it shows you how many ounces of water you have in here. On this side, you have to put the water in before you make the K-cup or before you brew it with that extra large uh, plastic container that your own grounds are in. And it, what I don't like about it is this, because it has its own water supply, you can preheat this, okay? Before I shave in the morning, I preheat the machine. By the time I come out, throw a K-cup in, it makes a K-cup rather quickly. This one, once you put the cake up in, then it starts heating the water. I did do a cheat. I'm sure the company's going to say, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I put not hot water in, but I put a water in that was warmer than cold water. It, it did shorten the uh, time it was to make the cake up. But all in all, uh, I think for $99, it was, it is a very nice machine. I, I, I'm still not sure that I, I like it enough to keep it because this one, I like the fact that you don't have to fill it up. I make a lot of K cups. Okay. Uh, probably two a day. And I like the idea that you can fill this up and probably make 10 K cups worth of coffee with the reservoir filled. And this has bold and strong. Uh, and this one you set. Uh, how many ounces you want. I think it's like six ounces, eight ounces, 10 ounces. And, and actually this one was also $99. So 
compared to that, this is you get you get more for ninety nine dollars here. But I still think I might like this better for K cups. That's it. It is the Hamilton Beach Flex Brew. Perfect. I have a yeah. um, interpretive dance of what the lawyers at Hamilton Beach were doing when they wrote those what? instructions. <laughs> Covering. <laughs> yeah, it. you get it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, Why? I, That's so ridiculous. I, I was saying what. And then I love that they said uh, the coffee maker was not meant to be your main timepiece. <laughs> what? Then what? What kind? Of, well, suppose, suppose you want uh, to. Right. Like the idea that the coffee maker would be your main timepiece. It's like, oh, let me check the time. Like <laughs> strapped onto your wrist or something like that. I just thank oh. you. Know, Yep. Our lawyers would like to inform you that you may want to purchase a clock to go along yes, with the yes, coffee exactly. maker to have or, a secondary... here is our toll-free number. <laughs> Call us and we'll tell you what time it is. Our lawyers would like to inform you that we recommend you don't use the product ever. That way you can't sue us yes. for using the product incorrectly. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Well, they just should have had a big thing on the front of the book. Please do not plug in. Right. Exactly. Ever. Do not use with power. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Golly. Um, anyway, I think that that is that slick. Stupidity. That is very nice. I think that, that how it stored in that extra. Uh, oh, piece isn't it, it's very clever. Brilliant. I thought. Yeah. And that you can take that whole little stand out if you're putting in a, a, a big mug yeah. or a thermos. I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah. And, and I think it's. I can. Uh, I don't know. I I can agree with you that the. The type of K cup pod situation where you have to pour in the cup and then it starts working does take a lot longer than my previous Keurig. Um, maybe it probably doubles the time. Maybe yeah. Maybe a little bit more than that. Um, yeah. It, so. Yeah. So no, yeah, I so. think I re I was trying to research. You know, can you just put hot water in at the beginning? And I couldn't get a direct answer to that, but it seems that cake cups with reservoirs may be keeping the water slightly warm. Yeah. So so that when you kick it in, they don't have the the uh, heater doesn't have to take cold water, heat it, and that's, and you're halfway there. That's the impression I got. Because also yeah. whenever I would move my Keurig and you unplug it, and I can kind of feel like. A little warm, a little bit warm in there, and it, yeah, it just bruises. It bruises so fast. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not quite instant, but it pretty fast. Pretty so I fast, always assumed yeah. that they kept the water pretty pretty warm. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right, so there Perfect. you go. Which brings us to Chad's yo, yo, Carambola. But you might want it at Chad's. Crappy Corner. Get it. Get it. Or don't. It's up to you. Um, okay, so we have less than $10 gadgets, and I've been trying to make those half of those voters happy by kind of keeping it a little Christmassy. So, recorded a video about this gadget earlier. So, let's take a look. Hey, Dickie D, we are back with another less than $10 gadget, and this one's right there it's at ten dollars exactly and this i thought would be a perfect stocking stuffer for anyone who's looking for a last minute gift so it is obviously a puzzle so let's open it up and check it out so here is what it looks like this i found at kohl's and it says on the back that the price is twenty dollars but it was uh, it was on sale, which I think it's always on sale. So it is ten dollars. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. And the goal is to fit. Oh, weird. Oh, that's a hidden, a hidden little thing to hang it up uh, when it's at the store. The goal is to get all of the cheese pieces plus a mouse to fit onto the board. So it mentions it right here that you have all the all the pieces plus a mouse. And it actually does not give you the hint. So you can see that there's this mouse down here on the corner. 
and it wouldn't work. It would not fit in there in this oh, configuration. I see. So oh, I see. It, it it doesn't spoil you on how this works. All the pieces have been removed. So I have all of my little cheese pieces and then my one mouse. Now, it is not obvious which direction any of these go. This looks like a right angle. So I think that that either goes here or it goes, you know, it's, it's obviously a corner. I think this one is a corner too. Do I see any other corners? Maybe this is a corner. Uh-oh, this might take a little while. <laughs> So this time lapse, I think, was about five minutes of me testing out the uh, the puzzle. And what I meant meant by it's not obvious. I've gotten which frustratingly way go. close. In fact, I wonder is this? Is this Don't you have a Dremel? <laughs> yeah, that is that is what is on the box. But this won't work because I cannot fit the mouse inside. But gosh, it seems so gosh darn close. And no matter how hard I try, I cannot figure out how to fit this piece in. Like that seems perfect. All of this seems perfect. I don't think, I think I might need to start all the way over. So you can't tell if your piece is correct side up or the other side down oh, or, right. yeah, you know. Yeah. So you don't have really any idea which way it should go. I am literally right back where I started. I don't <laughs> get it. That is ridiculous. I li uh. Okay. Well, I'm going to try one more time. Well, I got it. Oh! I'm hiding the answer right now, but as you can see and hear, everything is together. No extra pieces. And I'm going to let y'all... Decide. I'm gonna let Dicky D decide. Should I show you the answer? It was quite difficult. Very, very difficult. And okay. So uh, I would say for five seconds. Lift it up for five seconds. Okay. Okay. So I have it right here. Completed. Even less. Okay. Just. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Really oh, fast because I don't want someone happen. to freeze frame it. Well, they're gonna. They're yeah, gonna. I know. Here, I'll, here's here is the. I'll give you a hint. Let me. Um, hmm. Let me see. Oh, I know. Just show us the pieces one at a time. <laughs> here is the hint, and it's okay. not quite as easy as you think, because that mouse has to be in a square. Oh, okay, that's enough of a hint. You don't have to show us anything else. There you go. That's a that's a, that's a great hint. So, well, wait was, a minute. Do, it, inside the package, do they do they tell you that the the mouse can be in a square? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. And so okay. you you automatically it, it's yes, a brain think. teaser cuz you automatically think has oh, everything has to fit and it might not have to. Um, oh. so yeah, but even, even once I had decided I was going to stop worrying about all those things, it still took me quite a while. I didn't want to even show the time lapse of me doing it because I, you could have kind of guessed where I was aiming. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. So anyway, very, I really like the puzzle. Um, it took me. And what's it called again? Pocket it's Puzzlers? Pocket Puzzlers. And this is the right, mouse. So someone someone in the chat room is saying, is it a series then? Yes. So they have a few different types. And I saw a okay. few other ones there at the at Kohl's. And uh, like I mentioned, it like it said that it was $20, but I think that that was a suggested retail price oh, because okay. right. even when I go to Kohl's.com, it's eight dollars. Because I've <laughs> never seen a, a price crossed out twice. Originally oh, twenty dollars, then on sale for ten dollars, and now it's oh, I guess you get your eighty per, twenty percent off at checkout when you use your twenty. Oh, there you go. You get an extra twenty yeah. percent off with that. So code. the twenty percent is off the ten dollars. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So there you go. Uh, and yes, there was uh, a few different of these there. Let's see if they have any others around. They have some. 
Brainiac stuff. Let's see if there's any more of these puzzles. Oh, it looks like they saw oh, there, oh, I this. Think one just went by, didn't it? This oh, one, oh, one. I, I saw this one in the store, and I almost got this. And it, ha it has these tiles have like half a number written on them. Oh. And then the other one is written on the board itself. So you have to arrange all of the pieces together to to reach a thing. Oh, um, okay. So that one that one looked pretty cool too. I almost picked that one up. Um, but they had a few. Oh, here's another one. Oh, there they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this one too. So these these all these four. Uh, or three plus the one I'm looking at. So there you go. Uh, it was it was available at Kohl's, uh, the, and they sort of have a little gadgety section. That's, what, that's where I found oh, it. That's, that's and, fun. Um, not too not too expensive. So there you go. Pocket puzzlers. Not so crappy today. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Oh, uh, Jason Petticord says, here's a fresh video. I think you'll like, and here's his gadget. Ooh. Hey, Dick and Chad. It's Jason again. I've got two headsets I'm going to show you today. One of them I have been loving for about two years mm -hmm. because I work in noisy environments when um, I can put earplugs in, still take calls, still listen to other things. In fact, when you put earplugs in, I actually have to tear it the volume down. This is an Aftershocks Titanium Air. Inside this little case is the headset. Hmm. They're bone conduction. They sit right in front of your ear. Your control button is on your left side. As you can tell, I've been wearing them for quite a while. Little micro USB port for charging on volume up, down, answer call, skip, next track, everything's off on the side. When I bought this, it was on offer on Twit. So, I went and jumped on it, and they sent me this nice hard case, a coffee cup, labeled <laughs> off Aftershock, <laughs> and a little charger that's 3,600 milliamp. That's pretty good. And it's got both 2.5 and 100 milliamp charging ports. Just push the button, tells you how much charge it's got, or it starts charging. Okay. But, recently, Aftershocks came out with a new headset. That one's pretty good. This one blows it away. Ooh. Because... With the air, if I had the window open on my semi, people could hear the air rushing in and stuff. These are the new Open Calm. They can be either paired Bluetooth or NFC. They do take a different charger. It's a proprietary charger. You still turn them on with the plus button. They moved the control button to the other side, but it's got a boom mic on it now. You can't bend it down. You've got to turn it up and down, set it where you want. This uh, this mic here is to catch outer noise so that you can, um, there's noise canceling. People don't even realize I may have the window open on my semi. Here's the regular mic, and they can hear me clearly. The noise, the not noise, but the quality of the sound in this compared to that one is a world of difference. And I just love it. This is my go-to headset now. The other one is now being car carried as a backup. You guys have a great day. I'll be watching. That looks awesome. So, so I emailed Jason uh, and asked how much. And they both were the old version and the new one were $130. And... 
uh, he got his on a flash sale, uh, but he said normally they are $160 either on their company website or on Amazon. So, that so I, I guess he was awesome. saying he, he's a trucker right. and the mic is, is actually producing noise, noise reduction for the outside sound, right? Right. Right. So I could see yeah, that's so this pretty seems amazing. Like, it's like construction where yeah. you might be required to put in some type of ear protection. Now with the bone conduction, you can still take a call and with the, the noise rejection. So that's really, really cool. Um, it is IP 55 water resistant. Five isn't super crazy, but that's five on the dust scale, five on the water scale. Um, so that's pretty good. And yeah. also you're not going to be scuba diving with this. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, yeah. You'd want to make sure it keeps with out, the window open. Yeah. Sweat and, and a little bit of rain probably. Um, that is so interesting. Now yeah. I noticed someone in the chat said, Woot. Slump, I think, For might 50. own one because later on he said, oh, these things are great. And I see he just posted, then it's not shower proof, but it's great for bikers because they can hear the traffic. Right, right. Very cool. I think this is a great product. Um, I, could, I could really, really see for places that kind of require sound protection um, or... I mean, it's just all, all sorts of stuff. This, is, this seems great. Seems really good. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Jason, cool. so Jason, you'll get the uh, February issue of Mad Magazine. And um, if you have a product, okay, Jason had an old and a new product, uh, any kind of gadget, okay, old, new, a gadget that <clears throat> has been in the attic for 30 years that you can't throw out because it meant a lot when it was new. Make a little video, two to three minutes. Put it up on YouTube. When you upload, there's a drop-down menu. Click unlisted if you only want people with the URL to be able to see it. And send us the URL. It's mail at gizwiz.tv. And I think we only have maybe one more left, uh, possibly two. And uh, so we can use a video really soon. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And if you live in the U.S., you get the current issue of Mad Magazine. I'll autograph it. If you live outside, I'll send you one of those 39-year-old now Alfred E. Newman pictures autographed to you. I'll scan it and email you a high-res image to print out wherever you are uh, outside the U.S. That's it. Perfect. And the chat room is talking more about it and I didn't even think runners bikers anyone who needs to be able to hear throughout their you know normal hearing perfect you, your ears are unobstructed that's great and 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 160 dollars for decent headsets is not yeah. a lot of money these days not a lot of money at all the headphones so. seem to be at that price <laughs> It's like a fine wine. <laughs> yes. I don't understand why, but they're all exactly. around that price. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I've not listened to a, a bone uh, connection headset Connect, in yeah. a long time, but they usually were uh, bass shy. Yeah, uh, uh, but per who perfect knows for what? phone calls. Not, you're not going to be. You can listen to music, but it's not going to be a great experience. But yeah. for for conversations. Podcasts, audiobooks, that's really good. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to, you know, listen to <laughs> your favorite music, it's going to sound a little bit off. Oh, sure. yeah. Well, yeah. A little on the thin side. Yeah. With that, let's move on to the letter. Now, okay, so it's a very short uh, email, and I'm not quite sure I, I understand why he need. I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, all right, so it's from Endo Lardy, uh, E N D E R, the last name L A R D I. Please put the Gizwiz podcast on Spotify, oh. so I can have Alexa play it easier and access it on all of my devices. All my love, Ender. But the thing is. You don't need Spotify, right? 
You don't need it. it. So basically, there's a ton of pod catchers out there. So you know, you got Spotify. Doesn't you got doesn't Alexa Google. know where to find it? On sometimes, her own? sometimes. Um, like if you just say play it, it would work. But also sometimes you you might have your default set up as Spotify, and then it's oh, going to search oh, it oh, first. Oh, I see. You okay. know, and it's, it's the, all those sorts of things. So, um, in in uh, you know, Chumley is saying RSS is R, is an RSS. That's kind of how I felt for a long time. Is like I, you know, you have an RSS feed, you can you know wherever whatever podcatcher you want, like. You got an RSS feed, um, but I could also go through the steps. To, you just have to submit the podcast to, you know, Spotify, Google. I guess now it's, I don't know, YouTube podcasts. I don't even know what that is. It's very <laughs> simple to submit it. Um, you just have to go to all those places and say, hey, here's my oh, podcast. Here's some information about it. Get it up on your service. Um so okay, so, yeah, we, okay. We, no, because I remember Mo was complaining that he couldn't get it uh, on Alex A, and early on <laughs> I had an L, an Alex A unit, and finally one day I said, uh, "Play Gizwiz," and and it suddenly played it, and I go, "Oh, finally, it knows how to find it." Uh, so now I understand that you may have specified right. you want Alex A to get it a special way. Right, 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 right. So, and okay. I, and I I'm probably I've probably just do it too because people's habits you know you if you find a a method of listening to your podcast that you like you know if you're always using spotify to listen to your podcast well then yeah, just having the gizwiz on there is probably a good idea so yeah we should okay look into that uh, uh and uh, well thank you we all learn something here it. we try to avoid Teaching anybody anything, <laughs> but sometimes it can't be a real knowledge. Get out of here! Ew, <laughs> ew. Uh, I accidentally learned something. <laughs> that would be exactly. one of our pull quotes if we had an ad. <laughs> the Gizway Show. Listen to these comments from viewers. I accidentally learned something. <laughs> I tuned in for pure Holcomb, and they taught me something. <laughs> a satisfied listener. Two two out of five stars. I learned two, something. Two out of five stars, right. Oh, New Year's Eve. Yes. So next week we record again, I'm just reminding people, on thir we're back to Thursday, okay? Uh, at our normal time, uh, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 East Coast. And then we're back at a quarter to 12. So if you are alone on New Year's Eve or a couple of people and you're not partying, you know, we're just going to have like a 20 to 25 minute uh, podcast at a quarter to 12 East Coast and a quarter to 12 Central Time. So come in and join. Join the chat room. Send us a little video. OK, 30 seconds. Your New Year's Eve resolution, your New Year's resolution. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and if you don't have a New Year's resolution, make up one that you know you can't uh, break. You know, I will not drive my car into oncoming traffic. I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, anything. Okay. But join us New Year's Eve um, for our show and then New Year's Eve into New Year's Day for the uh, late night version. Perfect. Be there. Be there. Be there. Yes. I want to say thank you to our Patreon patrons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so oh much for supporting gosh. the show. We really Let me just appreciate check how many shows. Uh, this is our 290th show that you and I have done, totally supported by the Patreons. That's crazy. That's crazy. Amazing. So Amazing. in February, we'll be hitting 300 shows. 300 independent shows from yeah. you guys. Thank you. Uh, really, we could not do it without your support. Thank you so much. If you enjoy the Gizwiz, please consider giving back. Patreon.com slash Gizwiz. If you want to donate via PayPal, you can do that too at our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon button at the top of the website, and there'll be a big old Patreon uh, page with a banner. Right underneath that banner is the option to donate via PayPal. However you support, thank you so much for your yes. support. Really appreciate it. 
Uh, speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch the show live. That's where we will be next week on New Year's Eve. That is where we will be next week going into New Year's and the uh, in the afternoon. I guess the evening, afternoon, when, the night. Uh, and uh, <laughs> please head on over there. That's our website. You can watch it live. When it's live, it'll just take over the main page and there'll be a chat room right below that. When we're not live, it'll be the most recent video and all of our previous videos just below that. And uh, you can subscribe on iTunes. We have an RSS feed, possibly a, uh, <laughs> a Spotify feed very soon. <laughs> uh, YouTube uh, is there as well. And you can see all the previous episodes there on the website. That's gizwiz.tv, but if you head on over to gizwiz.biz, that's Dickie D's website where he writes up articles about all of the gadgets that we cover on the show. So once you head on over there, if you need the mobile version, by the way, you can head to gizwiz.me. Uh, we only have .me, .biz, and .tv. It's not that, you know, not that much to remember. Uh, <laughs> head on over there, play what the heck is it while you're there. We only have two more weeks this is the last chance, the last reminder, especially if you're listening to this after the fact, because next week's show will be recorded on New Year's Eve, and then you won't get another chance to put in your guests. So if you're listening to this and you haven't guessed, get on over to gizwiz.biz and get in your guests. This is an entire gadget, but you don't know what it is. You gotta guess what it is. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is obvious uh, to me that this is a... Uh, iPhone holder that you would attach to the side of a crab. Uh, so whenever you're on the beach having a relaxing day and you need to see your iPhone, just attach that to the nearest crab. There you go. You got an I iPhone holder. Pretty neat. Pretty good. <laughs> if you know Sounds what it like is, a, <laughs> go ahead. Sounds like a Kickstarter project to me. It's perfect. It's called the uh, crustaceous. Uh, the eye crab. crustacean. <laughs> the eye crustacean. There you go. <laughs> There's six man magazines, if you do know the answer, going up to a random correct answer, and 12 man magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, and interesting answers, so get creative over at gizwiz.biz. And there's instructions on how to enter on, uh, on that page. That about wraps it up for our show. Come on over here. Uh, next week on New Year's Eve, get in your videos for the New Year's Eve party, and uh, also your videos for the uh, for the Gadget Warehouse. See you next week. Oh, oh and happy holidays. Year. Sorry. Oh, happy, yes, happy holidays, happy holidays. everybody. Happy holidays.